Hello, in this session we're talking about Microsoft Information Protection and being able to scan on-premises data and have enriched analytics about what data you actually have. Wouldn't it be cool to search all of your current data and understand it a lot better? And out of interest, how do you have a classification scheme already in place today? So to find out what's out there, most organizations have repository with sensitive information in things like credit cards, uh, medical documents and things like that. So we can use the scanner in order to look at different file servers and SharePoint sites and report that information back for us. Microsoft Information Protection Scanner has some capabilities to look at SMB shares. Uh, even you can install the scanner on a machine, it runs as a service in the background. And we can look at other, other SIF shares, repositories like SharePoint, including 2010 all the way up to 2019. We're able to not just report back on those repositories, but also apply labels and protections if we want to as well. Installing the MIP scanner is super simple. Like I said, it's an agent that sits on that machine as the scanner and you're able to point it at shares or even to itself to be able to report back what information you specifically have. Some requirements are it's obviously running on a Windows server but also you attach that to a SQL database and we can get that scanner up and running within about five minutes or so. So let's show you that install process. So just for clarity here what I've done is set up a virtual machine. I've domain joined that and next thing I'm going to really do is set up that SQL Express directly onto this machine. If you have another dedicated SQL uh, farm, then you can point that to, to that environment as well. But for now, I'm just going to do a basic install of Express just to show you how easy it is to go away and set this up. We're just going to let this install a moment. And while we're waiting for that, we're going to jump on to the Azure portal and start setting up the Azure Information Protection portal to get ready for that node. So we're going to give it a cluster name. So you could type in things like Europe. So if you've got uh, dedicated scanner servers per region, you could set it up that way. For now, I'm going to call it cluster one, just because I've only got one scanner. And the next, we're going to create a content scan job. So this is where we're defining you know, when the schedule is for the scan job to run, what types of information do we want to discover? So we could specifically say, just look for credit card information or just look for all different types. And then whether we want to enforce policies and labels and protection specifically on this run. So we don't for this initial scan, we just want to do a discovery. And then there's a number of file types in here that you might want to exclude things like executables and, and temp files and things. So once we're happy with that scan job, we can hit save. And we need to go back into that and then set up the repositories that we're going to scan. So for this demonstration, I'm going to set up a share under the C drive of the scanner machine and then a folder called data. Here we go. And then we're going to assign that scan job to a cluster. Uh, you can also see under the repositories, I've got my C slash data going to set up that scanner and here we can see that SQL now has installed on this machine which is great. Next we're going to go install the Microsoft Azure information protection uh, client. So we're going to use uh, the same thing that you get for the old toolbar. So we don't need to use that toolbar anymore because it's built into Office Pro Plus but we're going to install the information protection agent on this machine and we're gonna open up PowerShell now to actually install the AIP scanner. So we're gonna do install hyphen AIP scanner and then point it to our SQL instance. So because we're using SQL Express, this is what we need to type in here, which is AIP scanner backslash SQL Express and then a profile of cluster one. I'm gonna type in my credentials and then head over to the Azure portal again and do my app registrations. So this means that scanner agent on that VM is able to talk and get all this configuration from my information protection Azure portal as well. So we're going to give it a name, AIP dedicated user or delegated user, uh, organizational directory, directory only for security. And then the web settings is just uh, local host. And once we've created that, we want to copy and paste the application ID. 
So we're going to need to put that into our scanner VM. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into a notepad on that machine. And next we need to go in, go into certificates and uh, secrets, add a new secret, give it a description. And just for the sake of this, I'm just going to say never. And then copy and paste that value for the secret into my notepad that I just created. AIP permissions is next. So we need to give it rights in order to get the right information. If we hit add a permission and then the Azure rights management services, application permissions, and then hit the content drop down, and we need delegate, delegated reader, delegated writer. And then add permissions again. At this time, we're going to APIs in my organization and we're going to search for Microsoft Information Protection Sync Service. Again, click the application permissions, hit the drop down for the unified policy, and then just tenant read and add permissions. Next thing, don't forget this click on the grant admin consent for your organization, and you'll see a lot of green ticks there, meaning it's all set up correctly. Let's jump back to the scanner VM. We've got our copy and pasted details in there for the application registration, and we're going to put that in. So these are the kind of credentials I'm going to put in first of all, and then I'm going to copy and paste that app ID into my command that I've just set up, including the secret and the tenant ID, which we're going to go and get from the Azure portal. If we go over to the Azure directory, we should be able to see that at the very top. Obviously, obfuscated this, so for security reasons, we're going to paste that into our notepad here and make sure the delegated user is the service account. So this is going to be pre-set up in your environment. Copy and paste that into PowerShell. And then we should get acquired access token on behalf of that particular user, which is great. Back in the Azure portal, we're going to go to the Azure Information Protection and then we're going to go on nodes and hit refresh. So we can see our VM there is registered. And then we can go back to our scan job and hit scan now. And that'll kick off that agent to scan that repository. But you'll notice that we've not set up the repository yet. So we're back to the VM. We're going to create a new folder directly on the root of C called data. And then I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of files into this. So it's got something to scan. Just extract that data, right? There we go. And we've got a bunch of uh, different files in there that we can now scan. Specifically on the VM, we can run some commands like get AIP scanner status to see what the scanner is actually doing. And if we go into app data, there's a folder in here called reports, and then we get some summary information of whether uh, the scanner has worked or not. So we can see that there's five matches for particular files and uh, a bunch that haven't been matched at all. But if we open up a new Word document, I've got some dummy credit card information in here. Let's copy and paste that into that folder and see what the scanner does. So again, we can do a get AIP scanner status. We can see that the scanner is scanning. Head back to the Azure portal, and now we're going to set up our log analytics. So make sure you've got a subscription within your tenant. Go back to AIP um, in here, create a new workplace space, give it a resource group name so we can containerize all of those services, and then an instance name we need to type in as well. So that used to be unique to your tenant, and then the region, and hit create. So this is setting up all of the uh, advanced analytics for information protection. This is both for the scanner and used for any labeling and protection that you're doing on 365 as well. So we can use that resources for both places. Then we can go to that resource, uh, jump back to Azure Information Protection Portal, and then we hit the configure analytics here to get started. Hit our log analytics that we just set up. 
hit OK and hit the relevant tick boxes. And after a while, it'll take us about a couple of minutes for information to start populating in here. So if we go to the uses report, we can see right now we've got one user and one device. Go to activity logs and we can see in the last 30 days exactly what the scanner has picked up on what files. So we got our credit card info file that we just added. And we can see over on the right hand side that it's got a confidence level of an 85 percent and there's one item for both credit card and debit card information within there. Also, we can use the filters. So if we just wanted to pick up credit card information, if we wanted to, we could do that. We can also see it's picked up an international classification and we'll go into that in a little bit. You can see the confidence level is about 50%. It's not actually picking up uh, that information correctly, but we can fine tune the scanner anyway that it is uh, giving us the, the relevant information that we want to scan back. If we jump over to our content scan jobs and go into that, if we wanted to enforce uh, relevant uh, labels, there's a couple of settings in here we might want to change, like enforce, so we can enforce labeling and choose protection of that content if we wanted to as well. Obviously, our recommendation is to discover what data you have first, get a report on that, and then decide whether you want to write that metadata, so that label to that content, and optionally add protection and encryption to that as well. Next, we're going to set up our log analytics. We're going to click at the very top here, click the get started. And this is where we can use our KQL, so our keyword query language, to delve deeper into that content that we've discovered. So you can see the very top here, we've got our KQL. And if I wanted to create a query that only brings back maybe the uh, last modified information for the last 31 days, we can type in that query very, very easily here. We're going to hit run, and then the relevant information or the results down the bottom here will uh, will change as well. All this information is stored within the SQL Express database that we've just set up. If we head back to the Azure Information Protection Portal, we can create new labels if we choose to label content and add, if we wanted to, protection to that content as well. So we can see for this specific confidential finance label, I'm picking up anything that references a credit card number within that content, how many occurrences of that content there are, and whether we're just looking for unique values. And if we rerun the scan again in the activity logs, we can see whether labels have been enforced or whether they've been upgraded or downgraded as well as part of that change. The data discovery preview shows us how much content we have in a very visual view. And if we head back to our usage reports over a course of time, then we're able to see how many labels have been applied, how much uh, of that protection has been applied, and then how many users and how many endpoints to that as well. From a licensing point of view, anyone that's consuming that content, there's no license for them to do that. However, your scanners will require some licenses. So if your scanner is looking for content for on-premises, then you need either a P1 or a P2 license. However, if your scanner is automatically classifying label and protection for on-premises files, then you're going to need a premium two license. And that's it for today. We just wanted to show you how to discover, classify, and protect your data, whether it's hosted within the cloud or even your on-premises infrastructure. Thank you.